Hello friends, this video on sexual reproduction in flowering plants part 2 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we will quickly discuss about the important parts of a flower in little more detail. So any flower has four walls which are arranged one after another. So just now I told you about the different part, I mean the different uh, sections or the different parts of the flower. But now what we'll see is overall we can divide a flower into four walls. What are walls? We will see it very soon. So what are those four walls? The first one is calyx. That is the world which is made up of all the sepals, the green colored leaf like small structures. So if you see, if you actually look at a flower, you will see that it makes a circle. So in a circle, the small leaflets are arranged, right? So that world which is made up of sepals is known as the calyx. The next world is corolla, which is made up of the petals. So if you see, the petals are also arranged in a circular fashion. So even if, even in a flower like rose, you actually see, it, it's like a concentric circle. So it is something like this, the petals are arranged in this fashion. Next is the androsium, which where it talks about the stamens. So the stamens, all the stamens together, they are also in a circular fashion. And this world is known as the androsium. And finally, gynosium, that is for the female reproductive part, which is located at the center. So gynosium is basically the innermost world, right? And calyx is the outermost world. So these are the four walls. So calyx is made up of the sepals, corolla is made up of the petals, androsium is made up of the stamens and gynosium is made up of the carpel. Right? So these four walls together form a flower. Now let us talk about each of these walls quickly. So calyx. It is the outermost wall and it is made up of the sepal. So each member individually is called sepal and the entire wall of sepals is called calyx. It is green in color. So as you would have seen that it doesn't matter what color the flower is. I mean the petals are but the sepals are mostly green in color. They protect the bud which later becomes a flower. That is what I was talking about some time back. That the most important role of the sepals is when the flower is not yet formed. So it is a bud. So that is when it provides a lot of protection. So when you talk about the calyx, again they are depending upon the type of sepals, they are of two types. That is gamosepalus and polysepalus. So what does that mean? Now gamosepalus, this means that the sepals are all joined to each other. So if you look at the structure of the sepals here, you see they are all joined to each other. So that is why the China rose is said to have a gamosepalus calyx. That is all the sepals are connected to each other. Whereas in polysepalus, poly means many. So there are many individual sepals as you can see in a rose. So if you see a rose a flower, you would see that the sepals are all individual. Each sepal is not attached to the other. So that is said to be polysepalous. Next is corolla. So it is the world just before calyx. So inner to calyx. The members are termed as petals and these are brightly colored. So it can be red, green, blue, yellow, anything. And that what makes the color of a flower. We often say that uh, the flower is red in color. So basically it is not the entire flower. It is not that all the parts of the flower are red in color. The petals, since the petals are big and noticeable enough, therefore the color of the petals actually uh, in a way depicts the color of the flower. Now, their bright color attract insects which help in pollination. Now, pollination is extremely important for sexual reproduction. We will talk about pollination a little later. So, this attractive color attracts a lot of insects towards it. They are again of two types, gamopetalus and polypetalus. So when you say gamopetalus, that means all the petals are connected to each other. As you can see here, here you see the individual petals cannot be distinguished. But if you look at a rose, you can actually remove one individual petal. So all the petals are like individual, they are not connected to each other. So that is polypetalus. 
The third one is the androsium, which is again located inner to corolla and this is the members of androsium are the stamens that is the male reproductive part of the flower. So androsium is the world which contains the male reproductive organ of the flower. So it is the male reproductive organ. So if you look at the structure of a stamen in detail, so each of these structure, each single stamen would look somewhat like this, which from one side and this is the view from the other side and this one is the top view or the view of a cross section of the uh, of the top part of the stamen. Now I will not discuss about these structures because we are going to do that a little later. So we will study things step by step. So now you just understand the four walls. And finally the fourth wall that is gynosium which is the innermost wall and it represents the female reproductive organ and the members are called carpal. So this is the gynosium, the central one. So it contains the carpal and it is the female reproductive organ. So this is how it looks like. So again we will study about the structure of this carpal also. It is the female reproductive organ. Thank you. Please visit www.examphio.com to watch more videos, attempt a free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.